Brooklyn Independent Television. Great Small Works was founded in 1995 as a collective of artists who produced miniature theater productions, museums, parades, and other spectacles. We visited their ninth annual International Toy Theater Festival, which proved to be a fantastical celebration of tiny art. We incorporated as Great Small Works in 1995, and before that we were known as the Ninth Street Theater. We had a studio in uh, Charas El Boillo, this abandoned school at Tompkins Square that had uh, been taken over by local groups and artists. One of the things that happened during Rudy Giuliani's term as mayor was that he wanted to reclaim the community gardens that had been sp had sprouted up all over the city and also he wanted to shut down some community centers that had also um, emerged in vacant city-owned buildings. There was a big conflict about that with the community for many years, which we got involved with because it was our space. We made a show about it, and for us, toy theater is a great uh, medium because you can say, hey, I, this is what I think is going on. We all met through Bread and Puppet. Bread and Puppet Theater is kind of the mother load of, of um, edgy, late 20th century, folk puppetry in America and we've all been through the been through it in some way or, or another. And we were all living in New York City, so we took some of the aesthetics and some of the political ideas that are really um, inherent in in Peter Schumann and Bread and Puppet's way of making theater theater that can be performed and thrown up anywhere on the street, in a warehouse, in a theater, and connects with people as a community event and as a social event rather than as a form of entertainment. This is what toy theater is. It's got an arches miniature. It's made of paper. It is flat and you can do it yourself. This is the Great Small Works Toy Theater Festival Temporary Toy Theater Museum. It's the ninth time this museum has happened. Basically, we try to collect toy theaters that are classic and traditional paper theaters, as well as sculptures that include toy theater as a reference point or different kinds of artwork that are inspired by toy theater. We have a pretty wide scope, and so there are a lot of different kinds of artwork that are welcome in the museum. Since the early 90s, I guess, we've been working on these festivals. I've been involved in designing the last three temporary toy theater museums, and then we also because we're a small company managing this very, very large affair, we all jump in as we can and, and take part and perform. And People have been really excited about the museum um, from the feedback that I've heard. You know, I think a lot of people have seen things in here that they've never seen before. People who aren't familiar with toy theater are completely enchanted with all the different kinds of plays with perspective and color and light. One of our favorite pieces that has just people have really loved this year has been a sculpture by Chris Fitch. And it's a kinetic sculpture that's cranked by hand. It doesn't use any electricity. It's totally comprised of gears and chains and pulleys. So that's really exciting to see something that's sort of old fashioned, but also really sophisticated, still be so enchanting for people to see. So. I am uh, uh, Dan Herlin, and I designed and directed Who's Hungry? And my name is Dan Fruit, and I produced and wrote Who's Hungry. And Who's Hungry is a, a collection of three short toy theater plays based on the lives of homeless and hungry people in West Hollywood, California. Dan sort of um, took the step further and decided that he wanted to be involved in um, art for social change. It became a piece that looks at the problem of hunger. Unable to see his way out of depression, he decided to commit suicide. He researched knots and tied the perfect noose. On his way to get the ladder, he passed a mirror and thought, I wouldn't be caught dead in these clothes. I trained as an oral historian for this project and went into the community and did a lot of volunteer work in the community. And we um, uh, made five book-length oral histories of people, some of whom were living on the street, some of whom were housed, but all of whom 
uh, were what we call food insecure. And from those five, Dan and I adapted three of those life stories into these short toy theater plays with the collaboration of the people themselves. Toy theater is kind of a perfect form for this story because it's very intimate form. You have to be sitting close to people in order to see it. Everyone is focused very, very powerfully in one very small area. The intimacy of toy theater actually became kind of the reason why um, we decided to do it in this, in this form. I'm presenting Growing Up Linda Fudgy's death about the fictitious heir to the throne of the Carvel ice cream cake empire. Perhaps you've seen the commercials. And in this piece, the story's told all through pop-up books that I made with a pop-up book designer named Eugene Seo. And we um, videotape them with a security camera and project them onto the screen. Category 5 earthquake. Miss Carvel crashed to the floor, splashing into several bedpans, sending shockwaves through the foundation. Hey, what the hell's going on up there? Jason Hicks, who's a puppeteer working with us on the festival, had been to New Orleans during Mardi Gras. And uh, he had seen a parade, a miniature float parade, with a giant brass band. We could imagine winding our way through the streets of Dumbo uh, with these floats. And once we threw out the idea, we got a really strong response. Due to the fact that we're talking about small stuff, like toy theater, miniature floats, people thought, oh, I could do that. So a whole bunch of people from a senior citizen center, they each made floats and little kids and adults and artists and musicians and puppeteers. Concrete Temple Theater has been working with the senior center on 12th Street in Manhattan. We decided uh, when we heard about the parade that it was an ideal thing for them to make floats and the seniors just went nuts. You know, they were pulling all kinds of things out. Some of them sewed entire costumes. It was really something else. The idea that you could do it yourself if you wanted to, that, that, that it's a way that people could be empowered to, to make art, to make theater about their own situation, you know, their own lives. It's always great to watch wonderful artists do their thing and, and to be inspired by that. A much older idea is that everybody in a community can take part in a ritual or a performance or a parade or a festival. And I think that's important for us. This particular neighborhood, I think, is really conducive to puppetry, to all scales of puppetry and outdoor performance. I mean, the backdrop and the, and, and the kind of landscape is on such an awesome scale that it kind of throws you off. It kind of takes it out of the regular human scale and the human grid. It's really, it's really the right spot. Brooklyn Independent Television on the BCAT TV Network.